Spirit, O God. Amen. Today we celebrate the Feast of Departure of St. Mary. That's the day she, we remember how she also uh, died and was buried. St. Mary, uh, we don't, there's not a single month or a single week even when we go without celebrating her. There is something very special about St. Mary. She's not just our mother, she's the mother of the church. And she herself is the church. So in many ways, St. Mary is our model. In many ways, she is our model. Sometimes you think of St. Mary as a, a mirror, a small piece of a mirror, and the bigger mirror is all of us. So we're all reflecting the image of Christ. Someone said, actually, in the, the canons of the church, for us to carry Jesus, we are like St. Mary. We carry Jesus when we take him in communion today. Every one of you will have Christ inside of you. And they said, if you want to be ready for communion, think that your internal parts is, are as pure as the internal parts of St. Mary. That's how we ought to think of ourselves, preparing ourselves. But when we take Christ, we become like her. She, today in the gospel, going to um, uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth immediately recognized that she had, is carrying the Son of God in her. If someone is filled with the Holy Spirit, the day you take communion, they will feel you. They will see that you are carrying the most precious person in the whole universe. The whole life of St. Mary is linked to the mystery of the Incarnation, linked to Christ, linked to Jesus. That's how she gets to be very special. Her whole life. And I will tell you something that, that, that actually puts St. Mary right exactly where she is, is where St. Luke is writing about her. This is the first chapter of St. Luke. And today we read the first chapter of St. Luke, and we read the first chapter of the book of Acts, both written by St. Luke. In the book of Acts, we see her in the church, in the first church, and uh, she's with the apostles receiving the Holy Spirit with them. Um, it begins with this. After they, Jesus ascended to heaven, and he promised them the Holy Spirit, and then they left and went back to the upper room, it says, then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Sabbath day is 1.1 uh, mile, less than two miles. <coughs> That's true. You can see Jerusalem from the mountain of Olives, and you can see mountain of Olives from Jerusalem. It's very close by. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip. Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. It's interesting to see St. Mary at the beginning of the book of Acts, although we might not hear about her in the book of Acts again. But at the beginning, right in the beginning, St. Luke puts her there. She is in the beginning of the church. Because St. Mary and the church is very close. They're actually one. When you think of uh, what happened in St. Mary, uh, when she asked, how can that be? How can that be that I would be a, a pregnant mother and I don't have a husband? And what does, does the angel say? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. It's what will happen to the church at the very beginning. The Holy Spirit came upon the church so that Jesus was figured out in all the apostles. In chapter 2, in the book of Acts, we see the Holy Spirit coming down and Peter starting to preach, preach the gospel to everybody and everybody believed and the church started to begin its life. That they, they didn't really, they didn't lose time. They didn't lose time. The minute the angel said to St. Mary, um, you, you will have a child, and she said, how can that be? And he told her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. She became pregnant when she said, I am that maid, handmaiden of the Lord, let it be to me according to your will. And immediately, Jesus was in her womb. Immediately, that same day. 
So when Jesus ascended and told his disciples, go back to the upper room and pray and don't leave Jerusalem, they stayed there. Within 10 days from ascension, they all got filled with the Holy Spirit, including St. Mary. And they were ready to bring Jesus to everywhere. So what happened to St. Mary is a, is a prefigurement of what happens to the church. That's why sometimes in the gospel we confuse what's going on. Is it St. Mary or it's not St. Mary? One of the things, the places that we always look at and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit difficult to say which way it is. Is the book of Revelation and it's chapter 12 of Revelation where they see, St. John sees in chapter 12, a woman... <coughs> A woman in heaven. So he said, now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. The numbers are very suspicious, very, very familiar numbers. Then being with the child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems, seven crowns on his head. Now, you read this far, uh, you get images. I get images when I read this far. I said, who is this woman who's about to give birth? And when she gave the birth, uh, a, a very fierce man comes to wants to kill the kid, the child. And uh, so it says that he... Um, and the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child. Who is that? Who is the woman? Oh, okay, the church and many church fathers say this could be St. Mary. Who is the dragon, that king that has to be, you know, fighting to get the, the child to kill? That's Herod, right? We can see that, that the, the, the dragon is the kingdoms of the earth, the king who wants to establish his kingdom. And he's fighting, he's waiting for this woman to give birth so that he can actually kill her child. We can see this in Herod. But in the book of Revelation also it says this is the Roman Empire. Because the Roman Empire had Rome was built on seven hills. And there were ten emperors, this is a prophecy, ten emperors who had ten cycles of persecution of the church. So the... Uh, the, 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 the image can apply to both of them. And it's very difficult to get the answer. Is it this or this or it's both? It's both. So St. Mary is, is, which is a mystery. This is the thing about, about our faith, that there is, no, there is no one way to look at things. It's very connected. Everything is connected and everything is like an onion. You peel, you get another layer exactly the same. You peel, you get another. But the, the, the difference is when you peel the onion, it gets smaller. This onion, when you peel, it gets much bigger. So St. Mary and the church is almost like two sides of one coin. She held Jesus in her, and she became that first human being to have Jesus in her womb. But we all hold Jesus. She was the mother. Now we all have the same symptoms of labor with Christ. St. Paul spoke about this in one of his letters. He said, I, you are my children whom I'm laboring with until Christ is figured in you. What St. Paul wants to do? That each one of us will be Christ-like. And this is the job of all parents, the job of all Sunday school teachers, the job of all bishops and priests, so that we become like St. Mary, that Jesus will come from our flesh and take over our existence and we become one with him. So this is... St. Mary's work for the church. She become the physical model that everybody can look to her and say, I want this. I want to be like her. If she's my mother, I want to be like her. And that's very beautiful. But St. Mary lived all her life, like we said, in the, the, she lived the, the mystery of Christ, like Jesus had said. We, you will get everything. You get recognition. You get everything you leave for Christ, you will get back but with persecution. We see this in the Senexarium. When they were burying her, a man came and said, just stop, she's not a saint, she's not holy, she got pregnant 
outside of wedlock, she got pregnant without marriage. She's an adulterer. An adulterer. She is not supposed to be honored. That's enough. Just bury her in haste and don't, don't say anything. Actually, he lived all her life like this. When you read St. John, especially St. John, she was very connected to St. John. Because Jesus on the cross said, I used to be your son, now this is your son. So St. John was very close to her. You hear tones of accusation in the Gospel of St. Mary, of St. Of John, of St. Mary. So the, uh, see, Jesus tells the Jews, um, if, you, if the son frees you, you will be free, truly free. If the son set you free, you will be truly free. They say to him, we're not born of fornication. Who spoke about fornication? Why do you say that? As if they are actually accusing him. Go find out who's your father. So St. Mary had carried this all her life. There is hints of that in the gospel. Carried this tribulation all her life. When Jesus one time was preaching in a room, and a big a house or a place, and then one of the women says, Blessed is the womb that carried you, and blessed are the breasts that nursed you. And Jesus answered, But blessed are those who hear the word of God and do it. So he's saying, he doesn't say, but, he says, actually, even more. That's the translation, even more. If St. Mary, my mother, really did the will of God because St. Elizabeth told her today, what does she say? Blessed is she who believed what was told her from God. And Jesus is saying, this blessedness is extending to the church, all, all the church. This is my mother. He said, that's my brother. This is my sister. So St. Mary became the model. And that's why we honor her. Looking at her all the time and thinking about her, you think about what you ought to be. And relationship to Jesus. What you ought to be. How do you should take care of him? Do you think that St. Mary has anything else to think about but her son? I don't think so. The, the gospel tells us she was going around. Wherever he goes, she is there. She's at the door when he's preaching. Very concerned and wanted to hear what he would say. You hear a glimpse of her heart when they tell her, oh, we ran out of wine. They, they are very very anxious. They have nothing to offer to the guests. Maybe they didn't estimate the number of people coming. And she says, whatever he tells you, do it. How is that? Then you guess, you, I guess inside her, her mind, she knows that he is not a regular human being. He's much more. And his words are of very great value. Have you ever th seen a mother think that way about her child? <laughs> no. Would you go to a mother who has, she has a toddler and she, she thinks of him as someone very great and she respects that toddler two years old, three years old? No. She's a great teacher. So she has these secrets in her heart. Whatever he says, do it. I uh, think most mothers in their mind, they think, oh, he doesn't know anything. He's still going to be, he's going to be a child all his life, even if he's 70. If I'm still alive, he's a child. You, Walad, you'll always listen to me. You think St. Mary would say that? She knew who he was. She knew what he came to do. She knew that mystery since she was, um, he was like 40 years, 40 days old. The, uh, Simeon said to her, and you too, your, wo your uh, heart will be pierced with a sword. She knew that she's going to have to go through that hour. But she became for us that example, the model. We know whom we are dealing with. Today when you're coming to take communion, think what you are doing. You're actually receiving into you, into your own belly, into your own womb, spiritual womb, the Son of God, the, the mystery of all ages, the greatest thing ever existed for us as humans. In the realm that we are living in, in the place that we're living in, this is the greatest thing, and that the light of our hearts, the life, the road, the bread of life, everything that we can think of. Like St. Paul says, to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's exactly it. And I think St. Mary was excited to go to heaven today when she knew about that she would be joining her son eventually. I think that was very exciting for her. 
And that, that, that moment when Christ came and took her soul was what she was waiting for all her life. We ask St. Mary to give us her intercession, motherhood, and love, and care, and to help us to transform ourselves to be like her as a model. And we give glory to Christ with his good Father and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen.